Okay, you guys, we're going to start our drawing, and as you can see, we're going to have four sheets in it. We're going to start with our inch template. So I'm going to open from my daily work, and I'm going to grab my inch template, not the SI. Be very careful. It says, hey, it's not the correct location. Say yes. I still want to open it. But now I'm going to file save as to immediately. It automatically goes back to the place that it was drawn from. So over here, gr grab and click on your workspace button. And this is going to be called butterfly valve. So now that I've seen that that's changed, um, the things that we need to do administratively to get this ready for an assembly drawing, because this is just a regular, you know, part drawing, is to take off the material in the notes. So let's take off that note. Having the ASME note on sheet one covers the entire drawing. The other thing that I want to do is uh, change the initial release date, and that's today's date. That's the initial time that we drew it. 72721. And then we're going to fill in the title block. Now, the first sheet is it's going to be the assembly that's what's on there. So that's what we're going to make the title, and then comma the adjective of what kind of assembly. So double click field text under the title block. ASSY is a proper abbreviation, but you can type out assembly. Initial view scale. We have to remember that if we're going to have two different scales on there, that we have to start with one, one view, whichever one. And then if another view is of another scale, we have to remember to put that in. 7, 27, 21. And the sheet numbers are uh, parameters, so they'll change as we add sheets. All right, so I'm going to start with my isometric view. Save that. And we're going to start with our base view being the isometric view, and it brought that right in, our IPN. And I'm going to look at the scale that I can use. Maybe I can use one half scale. That looks pretty good. You need a large enough scale to be able to get your balloons in there because your balloons are set in size. Now, I want this to be shaded and no hidden lines, although my, you know, if this part, this arm is of a, a clear material, that's the way it's going to show up. And I may go back and change its appearance, and it's really just the appearance. Now, here's the deal. I could either show trails or turn them off. I'm going to show trails on Yes, and notice that only the one that I left the tweaks for are inside here. So I'm going to say OK. And notice that that went to um, a more opaque look. All right. So I've got a lot of trail lines. And you don't have to have all these. This is one that I am going to require because this is very odd. You can't even see the cut. Now I'm going to zoom in on this. You can't even see where it goes in this orientation. So if we, if we turned it anymore, we would be having interference with the body and the plate. Now this one I really didn't want, so I can right click and turn off visibility. I just want one line showing that that goes in there at that angle. Now what happened to this one? Didn't I say that I wanted that one? Let's undo. Why is that one going away? That's part of that same tweak. And so what happens here is this screw was not only pulled up here, it was pulled out here, and it is, it has created uh, a situation where if I take this one off, it's going to take that off too. So I don't know do anything with that. If I could take that away, I'm just going to turn off visibility of that one, and assume that people can see that. And that's that is kind of odd that that does that. 
All right, and on this one, this looks good. Notice that your trail lines stop at your geometry when it's solid, so that's kind of a good thing. Any trail lines have to be a phantom line type. Phantom line type is like a center line with two dashes. And in Inventor, there is a line, co line type called a double dash chain. Remember that we use a chain line type for our symmetry lines. We're going to use a double dash chain line for this, which will have two dashes. So I'm going to grab the three lines. And if you grab anything other than the lines, it will give you a problem. So I'm going to right click on this and go to properties of these lines right here. I'm going to go to a double. Hold down and say OK. Now you want to see at least one set of dashes here. And that looks good to me. And sometimes it looks like it goes away, but if you zoom in, it's still there. It's very strange. I think it's maybe it's my system. Now let's go ahead and put in the other view. So I'm going to put in a base view. And I'm going to hit the down key. And this is anything that's open right now. I can go to the assembly. Tiny little thing. Let's go to the home view in that. And we're going to put this in at one half scale as well, which is nice because I already have one half scale in my title block. Uh-oh, what happened? I forgot to say shaded. I can edit that and go back. All right. And I really hate that these lines are not showing up. They are there. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're, we're going to put in our bill of material. And it's really important. We're gonna, I'm going to show you guys that I'm going to copy this bill of material to each sheet because it's going to help me remember what the item numbers are. So I'm going to go to annotate, parts list, you can select either one of these because they have the same parts in them. And we can go to parts only, numeric, one revision, and enable them to wrap if you want to. And when I say OK, it's going to say, hey, have you enabled your, your bill of material view in your assembly? And I'm going to say no, but it'll do it for me. That's going to make it have to save that assembly. Yes, so if I do anything that affects the assembly, which is this, then it's going to try and save it when I save this drawing. So I'm going to set this in here. And it doesn't matter in what order you bring these parts in. What matters is that the item number, number correlates to the item numbers on the sheets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this for parts list to be in all caps. I'm going to have it be at the bottom. And then I'm going to make this in ascending order. So if you double click on it, we're going to go to the little hand with the card for our layout. I'm going to change this to all caps. Maybe I need to do that somewhere else so that our, our um, title, this is always correct. Heading at the bottom and the number one needs to be next to the heading. So I'm going to go to add new parts at the top or in ascending order. You don't ever want your heading at the top and it to be in ascending order. That item number one wants to be by the heading. So I'm going to apply it, see what that looks like. Okay, so now if you look at your view layout, I want you to uh, follow the same parts on the same sheets. So the body is on sheet two. So I'm going to double click on this or click on it and just type. Start typing. Um, the plate is also on sheet two. So I can copy this, control C, go down to plate, grab the box and control V like it, it's an Excel spreadsheet. The shaft is on sheet three. And everything else is on sheet four. So that gets rid of our problem with this being lowercase text.
that space. Don't let there be two lines in there. So I'm going to select on it, control C, control V. So try and select on the box if you can, like that one, control V. If I zoom in, I'm using control and my scroll button, making that larger. Then now I can grab it and control V. So everything else is sheet four, but the shaft, the body, and the plate. Now, I want to copy this to sheet two, three, and four. So let's do that and get our administrative text set up, all of our title blocks, and then we'll come in and put all of our views on, all our automated center lines, symmetry lines if we have the and titles of our parts. So I'm going to control C, copy this. And I need to make a new sheet. So let's say um, you go to place view, you should get new sheet. But if you right click anywhere on the screen, you can say new sheet. Let's go for sheet two. That's going to every other but sheet one will be details of the parts. Details. Butterfly valve. Now, I'm going to teach you guys something that I think is super cool. I'm going to copy this. And I just copied that. But Windows keeps like 12 things copied. And you can pin them and you can select what you want to paste. So I'm going to copy this one. And it doesn't override that. And always, I never knew that until just recently in this past year. And then we have to put in our name. So on sheet two, we've got everything done except our scale and the things that will automatically populate. I want to copy, I'm going to paste that um, parts list in here. So if you hit the Windows key, that little, you know, that has a little flag, like down on the lower left of my screen, that little blue thing, that start button, there's one on your keyboard. Windows V to paste, it brings up a clipboard. And it did not copy that parts list. So it doesn't like to copy the parts list. So I'm just going to put another one in here. If I did the parts list, it wants to select a source. It wants to select a view. But I think it can copy and paste it. Let's go back to sheet one. Since this sheet is created, it would not copy this to the Windows clipboard. So I'm going to control C. Let's go to sheet two, control V, pop, populated it right in the correct point. Now I'm going to create the next sheet, right click on any space in the sheet, new sheet, same thing. Now I copied this one, but I just copied and pasted that. Now I'm going to use my Windows key and it's showing over here on my other screen and I tried to put it over there. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to hit the Windows V. There it is. Now you see all the things that I can copy and paste? I copied and pasted pictures, and I can delete them. I can pin them so that they stay there, so that I can use them over and over. And you see C Sheet 2, I can do that. So this is where I have all these check print things, all that stuff. So I'm going to use details, butterfly valve, and put in my initials. So I pinned all my password stuff that I send to you guys. And now I'm going to put in, let's go to sheet two, control C. And this is not, this table will not copy to my clipboard on Windows. Control V. And I'm going to delete this later. But this is going to make sure that I get the item numbers correct. And then I'm going to create a new sheet. So Windows V. I should do the same for the date and my initials too if I wanted to. 
And that has saved me so much time. That's huge. Well, let's see if I can control V in here. So it doesn't it doesn't keep it. So control C. Control V. And now I've got this on all four sheets. That's going to help me. So I'm going to go back to sheet two and we're going to get started from that point. 